Good morning, class, and welcome to Chapter 9, Part 2. Today we're going to continue talking about solutions. As always, please have your periodic table, scratch paper, pen, pencil, calculator, and your pre-printed notes. The topic we're going to start off with today is all about the concentration of a solution, which is defined as the amount of solute over the total amount of solution. Now again, this is really important. It's the amount of solute, which you will hopefully remember from Chapter 9, Part 1. The solute is the stuff present in the smaller amount. It's the amount of solute divided by the total amount of solution. Again, be very clear that that is not solvent on the bottom. It is the total solution. And we have several different ways that we can measure this concentration. The first way that we're going to talk about is the mass percent. The concentration by mass of a solute in mass of solution. It is the mass of the solute in grams divided by the whole thing, which is the mass of the solute plus the mass of the solvent. So again, it is the amount of solute divided by amount of total solution times 100. Okay, so the way that you will see this is this way, this bottom way here, mass of solute divided by mass of solution. Just keeping in mind that that bottom part is the solute plus the solvent. Okay, all right, so let's try an example. Suppose we want to prepare a solution from 8 grams of potassium iodide and 42 grams of water. Since water is present in the larger amount, it's our solvent. If we want to know the mass percent, that would be the mass percent of the solute divided by the entire solution times 100. So it's 8 divided by 42 plus 8, or 8 divided by 50 times 100 is 16%. So let's do one ourselves. What is the mass percent of sodium hydroxide in a solution prepared by dissolving 30 grams of sodium hydroxide in 120 grams of water? So again, the formula says to take the amount of solute, the thing present in the smaller amount, divided by the whole solution, which is 30 grams plus the 120 grams of water times 100. So this is going to be 30 divided by 150. And I know my decimal point wasn't really strong there, but that is 30.0, not 300. Okay, so 30 divided by 150 and then times 100 should give you a total of 20%. And somehow this is on red. Let me put this back on black. There we go. Okay. The volume percent is very simple. It's instead of masses, it's volumes, which is usually measured in liters or milliliters in chemistry. So you'll have the volume of the solute divided by the volume of the entire solution times 100%. And then tying in with that same theme, we have the mass volume percent, which is a mixture of the mass percent and the volume percent. On the top, we have the mass of the solute in grams divided by the volume of the entire solution, again, in liters or milliliters, times 100. Okay, so we have three ways so far. We have the mass percent, the volume percent, and the mass volume percent. Okay, so let's look at some examples of this. If I told you you had an 8.5% by mass solution of sodium hydroxide, what I'm telling you is that there are 8.5 grams for every, one, every 100 grams of solution. I am also telling you that for every 100 grams of solution, you have 8.5 grams of sodium hydroxide. So just like in previous chapters, we can use this information as a conversion factor. The same is true for percent by volume. If I am telling you you have a 5.75% by volume solution of ethanol, what I'm really saying to you is that you have 5.75 milliliters of ethanol for every 100 milliliters of solution, or 5.75 liters of ethanol for every 100 liters of solution. And we can also say for every 100 milliliters of solution, you have 5.575 Blah, blah, blah. Try that again. 5.75 milliliters of ethanol. Also, you could use liters there as well. For every 100 liters of solution, you have 5.75 liters of ethanol. 
Again, also, you know, true for mass by volume. For a 4.8% mass by volume solution of hydrochloric acid, you have 4.8 grams of hydrochloric acid for every 100 total milliliters of solution, and vice versa. Another way to measure concentration is to look at molarity. Molarity is moles of solute per liter of solution. Okay, moles of solute per liter of solution. So instead of grams or milliliters, we're now going to have moles. And we abbreviate molarity by using a capital M. So whenever you see capital M next to a number for a solution, it is telling you that the concentration of that is however many moles per liter. So a one molar solution of sodium chloride is one mole of sodium chloride for every one liter of solution. Let's try an example. What is the molarity of half a liter of sodium hydroxide solution if it contains six grams of sodium hydroxide? Again, molarity is number of moles of solute per liter of solution. We are told that we have six, get my decimal point in there, six grams of sodium hydroxide and a half a liter of solution. Well, we don't want grams per liter, we want moles per liter, so we need to convert our grams of sodium hydroxide into moles. We do that using the periodic table. We can look up how much one mole of sodium hydroxide weighs. If you look on your periodic table, you will see that sodium weighs approximately 22.99 grams per mole, plus an oxygen weighs 16.00 grams per mole, plus a hydrogen weighs 1.01 grams per mole for a total of 40.00 grams for every one mole of sodium hydroxide. So we can now determine how many moles we're dealing with. So 6.00 divided by 40.00 tells us that we have 0.15 moles of sodium hydroxide. Now we want to know how many moles per liter. So that is 0.15 moles of NaOH divided by a half a liter. So we don't have a whole liter here. So typing this into our calculator, we get um, divided by 0 0.500 gives us a molarity of 0 0.300, capital M, right, capital M for molarity, sodium hydroxide. So our concentration of sodium hydroxide is 0 0.300 molar sodium hydroxide. Okay, let's try another one. What is the molarity of 0.225 liters of a KNO3 potassium nitrate so, solution containing 34.8 grams of KNO3? Same thing, we want moles per liter. At the moment, we have liters, but we don't have moles, we have grams. We have 34.8 grams of KNO3. In order to complete this problem, we need to know how many moles that is. Just like always, we can look this up on the periodic table. Okay, now let's see what we got here. So potassium, 39.10 plus one nitrogen is 22.99. Okay, and we also need to add up the three oxygens. 16 times 3 is 48, so plus 48 should give us 110.09, 110.09 grams for every one mole. Okay, so 34.8, 34.8 divided by 110.09 should give us a total number of moles of 0. Point, let's see here, 3 sig figs, 316 moles of KNO3. <clears throat> Again, we want the molarity, which is moles divided by liters, so 0 0.316 moles of KNO3 divided by, uh, we don't have a whole liter, we have 0 0.225 liters. So the concentration of our solution is 0 0.316 divided by 0 0.225 tells us that our concentration is 1.40 molar. A nice strong solution, 1.40 molar KNO3. 
Now, these units of molarity can also be used as conversion factors, just like percent by mass, percent by volume, um, mass volume. Molarity is the same way. What molarity is telling you is that for if you have 3.5 molar hydrochloric acid, for every 1 liter of this stuff, you have 3.5 moles of HCl. Written as a conversion factor, that is 3.5 moles of HCl per 1 liter, or for every 1 liter, 3.5 moles. This will become important later on. Okay, let's do a couple more examples. How many grams of sodium hydroxide are needed to prepare 75 grams of a 14% by mass sodium hydroxide solution? Well, let's think back to what percent by mass was. So percent by mass was the mass of your solute divided by the mass of the solution times 100 equaled your percent mass over mass. So what do we have here? We have, here's our equal sign, we have our 14%. Okay, the 100 doesn't change, put that in there. Now, we want to know how many grams of sodium hydroxide are needed to prepare 75 grams of a solution. So the 75 grams is the mass of the total solution. So we have this number here, we have 75 grams. This is what we're solving for, the mass of the solute. So to solve for mass of the solute, the first thing we're going to do is get rid of the 100. Divide both sides by 100, right? So that would give us, let's see here, 0 0.14 equals x over 75 grams. So if we want to get rid of the 75 grams, we would multiply both sides by 75 grams to solve for x. 0.14 times 75 would give us 10.5. So x, or the mass of the solute, is 10.5 grams. So we want to go to the scale and weigh out 10.5 grams to make our solution. Let's try another one. How many grams of aluminum chloride are needed to prepare 125 milliliters of a 1.5 molar solution? So now we have slightly different information here. We want to know grams of aluminum chloride. We have a total volume of our solution and we have a concentration. Instead of percent by mass or percent by volume, we have a molarity. What does molarity stand for again, that capital M? Well, that capital M means moles per liter. So what do we have that can get us there? Well, get us from moles per liter, rather, and milliliters to grams. Well, let's write this out as a conversion factor. This is 0 0.150 moles of stuff for every one liter. Well, we don't want an entire liter, though. We only want 125 milliliters. How are we going to use this information to get there? Well, we could turn our milliliters into liters by dividing by 1,000. So that would get us 0.125 liters. We could then cancel those liters and be left with moles. Okay, so 0 0.150 times 0 0.125 tells us that we want 0 0.188 okay, moles of solution. Right? Now, we want grams, right? How do we get from moles to grams? How do we go from 0 0.0188 moles of AlCl3 to grams? Well, we use our periodic table, right? We can look up on our periodic table what one mole of AlCl3 must weigh. So let's take a look. If we come over here to our periodic table, you'll see that aluminum weighs 26.98 plus three chlorines, each one weighing 35.45. So you may want to use your parentheses on your calculator here. 35.45 times three in parentheses, adding to your 26.98, should give you one... 33.33 grams per mole. So we'll take our original 0 0.0188 times 133.3.
for a total of 2.51 grams of ALCL3. ALCL3. All right, let's talk about what happens when we're in solution, right? When we're doing um, a chemical reaction in solution. So we've talked about balanced chemical equations before. We've just started talking about molarity and volume, and we can use that information to determine moles or grams of the reactants or products. Well, how would we do this? Well, let's take a look at an example. Let's say you have some zinc metal, and we want to react this with hydrochloric acid to produce hydrogen gas and zinc chloride. Well, this happens by a balanced reaction that says that one mole of solid zinc plus two moles of hydrochloric acid give you one mole of hydrogen gas and one mole of zinc chloride. The question is, is if you have a liter and a half, or I'm sorry, if you have one and a half molar hydrochloric acid solution in the lab and you have 5.32 grams of zinc and you want to know how much of that one and a half molar solution to mix, you can figure that out by using your balanced equation. However, remember that our balanced equation tells us moles to moles to moles or molecules to atoms. It does not allow us to compare grams to grams. So again, that balanced equation says for every one mole of zinc, you must have two moles of hydrochloric acid. So our starting information tells us that we have 5.32 grams of zinc. In order to compare or to determine how much hydrochloric acid we would need, we must convert this into moles. Because again, our balanced chemical equation is talking about moles. So if you look at the periodic table, it says that one mole of zinc weighs 65.39 grams. Okay, so this gets us from grams of zinc to moles of zinc. Now, again, our balanced equation tells us that for every one mole of zinc, we need two moles of hydrochloric acid. So let's see how many moles of hydrochloric acid we have for every one mole of zinc, we need two of HCl. Okay, so that would get us from moles of zinc to moles of HCl. Only problem is, is you can't weigh moles of HCl in a graduated cylinder on a scale, right? Instead, we need to know liters. What information do we have that might get us finally to liters? Well, we know the concentration of our solution, right? The concentration of the solution in our, in our container is one and a half molar, which means that for every one liter of this stuff, you have 1.50 moles. So that allows us to cancel our moles of HCl and leaves oh. us with liters. So entering this into our calculators, we would say 5.32 divided by 65.39, enter times 2, enter, divided by 1.50, enter, tells us that we need 0 0.108 liters of the stuff. Now, I'm sure you guys have been measuring some stuff in your labs, right? You've had some measured some stuff with some graduated cylinders. 0 0.108 liters. Does that sound like something that'd be easy to measure out? Well, I'll tell you, it's not. I mean, the question did ask for liters, and there's the answer. But let's be realistic. If you were going to go in the lab and measure this out, you'd probably want to measure this in milliliters. So how many milliliters are in a liter? Hopefully you remember that there are 1,000 milliliters in a liter. So this would be, instead of 0 0.108 liters, this would be 108 milliliters which is actually a lot easier for you to measure out. Okay, let's start talking about dilutions of solutions. So sometimes you go into the lab and discover that you need maybe some one molar hydrochloric acid, but the only hydrochloric acid you have available to you is three molar or four molar. What do you do? Well, the great thing about solutions is that you can dilute them or make them weaker. So in a dilution, we take a solvent, usually water, and we add it to a solution, which increases its volume and decreases the concentration. Now, I want to be really clear about something. It decreases the concentration by increasing the volume. However, 
Adding solvent does not change the amount of solute present. Okay. A great example of this is making orange juice from concentrate. Right, You start out with a can of really, really, really sweet um, orange juice slushy mix, and you mix it with several cans of water to make it drinkable. So again, in a dilution, we're going to add water. We're going to increase the volume of the solution. We're going to decrease the concentration, but the mass of the solute remains the same. This final piece here is really important. The mass of the solute in the solution doesn't change. The total mass of the solution changes, which is what decreases the concentration. So in the initial and diluted solution, the moles of the solute are the same. However, the volumes are different. So we have an equation that we can use to calculate our new concentration. We say that C1, or concentration 1, times its initial volume is equal to the new concentration times the new volume. The other key piece to keep in mind here is that you cannot make a concentration, you cannot make a solution stronger in concentration by adding water, right? You can only make it weaker. Once you've made it, there is no way to make it stronger, right? The only way to make it stronger would be to boil off some of the water. But you can go from stronger to weaker, just not weaker to stronger. So thank you for listening, and I hope to see you back here for Chapter 9, Part 3.